the, the only question I have, Amanda, is, is I said, was on the board of the American Cancer Society. Yes. Okay. Why is it that we just have enough? Some, some quite a few people down there want to take away the funding for schooling. You know, we reduced uh, smoking incidents in schools by 39 percent. Now all of a sudden we just whack out all this. You know, we're not funding any programs for young people against smoking or cancer, and we've reduced cancer deaths. We've done all these things, but yet our state just says, "Hey, you don't need to get any more money." What, what, what is your well, feeling down a, there? What's, it's been a general philosophical difference between the House and the Senate. Uh, our human services budget will be coming out. Monday or Tuesday or whatever, and, and in that you'll see, uh, we're, we're trying to put money into that because we've seen it would be a very effective program. We've reduced uh, smoking, and, and even nationally you'll hear people talking about the education for young people, and that's who's starting to smoke. And that's where a lot of people, you know, our age. Well, they ding the thing on, on cigarette packages in order we can't put, you know, right. and that's what heart right. surgeries and the tracheotomies on it. You know, I mean, I think this is good to have this stuff out. I have people attack me. I say, they want me to take the sign down on our store here that has a thing outside that says, we're offering the lowest price on cigarettes allowed by law. You know, people read this and, you know, and they think, well, are we promoting cigarettes? You know, that you can buy them here. This is the cheapest you can get them. Today. Well, I don't know. Are you involved in the, or not involved in, but understand the, the roll your own? Group that's in. I started to hear wrong ways about oh, that. Well, they they have legislation that out there that wanted to, you know to make it so. Well, they are in the state yeah. doing their roll your own. You go into the place and they've got these machines. You pick up your your tobacco <laughs> and, and you make your own. And there's no tax on that, so you can come out for a carton of cigarettes. It's like twenty eight dollars or something like that. Where you go to the but store, I, fifty some I, dollars. Yeah. yeah. So these, they're coming in from out of state, sort of like payday loans, <coughs> a place for a prop, and they're going all across the United States doing that. So we've got legislation, uh, and you may have it in the House, too, that, to tax them, you know. I haven't seen it. I mean, nothing's come up. You get to do that, you get to pay. Nothing's it. come up in ways so, and yet, but. Well, but I mean, it's, it just bothers me to think, you know, that we keep things that are working, we quit funding. Well, we're planning to not yeah. do that. That's one of our top priorities. I don't really know what She's a nurse and she'll smoke some you know, and I see why she doesn't want to do that. But <laughs> she, she is part of why yeah. there it is part happening of the in the House, but it, and for other reasons than that probably, but um, but the <coughs> Senate feels strongly about it. And, and we, we've been very frustrated because the governor hasn't appointed anybody to the Tobacco Commission for a long time, and they have left those seats ba excuse me, vacant. And after our urging, he has finally added some people to the Tobacco Commission. Okay, now other people? Josh, uh, <clears throat> you said everything I wanted to say about the gas tax, so I know you're not going to repeat it. Um, because, but why did the governor do a 180 degree? He came out, I'm going to promote a gas tax, and today he probably did not sign it. He'll sign it if it gets to him. He, he's tongue in cheek basically said that if. Basically, he said, I'm not going to go out and bang the drum and promote it, but I'm also not going to go out and say, don't do it. And if it comes across my desk, I probably won't veto it. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I agree. I, we have a group, just so you guys know, I mean, I'm, it's all about transparency. So we have a group of senators that are going in to talk to the governor on Tuesday to talk to him about coming out and supporting this. I think if you were to come out and say, we need to do this, I think it would move forward. Oh, well, I think there's the votes for it in the Senate, yep. frankly. And then we're going to see how it goes on Tuesday with that group of senators with the governor. And if we feel like we nudged him a little bit, then I'm leading a group of representatives in the next day to have a meeting with him on the same thing, to try to push him over to here. So, um, I don't know. It's it is. It's and, and Amanda's exactly right. I mean, there has been some really strong, vocal people down there this week trying to push this thing forward. And I think, you know, we had a group of uh, I think they brought two chartered buses down, and it was from a six county area, and it was Howard County, Winnesee County, Clayton yeah, yeah. County, and it was county supervisors, county engineers. It was it was your <coughs> your folks like. Falks and, and the, but it was the Brunings over in that area and stuff. It, the, it was the AGC yeah. and everybody down. And 
I think they nudged some things forward a little bit, you know, at least on, I heard a little bit on the Senate side, maybe it rocked the rock a little bit. Well, I don't think the Senate's been a problem, but, but, you know, Speaker Paulson saying that on Thursday afternoon wasn't, I'd say it's probably a bigger thing than, than the governor by any means. I, I mean, I, I think, and I'm not criticizing anybody over there, because that's not your fault, Josh, at all. I'm just saying, when Speaker Paulson says it's not going to happen, um, well, public the major hit as of this morning in the paper. I think that I, took uh, it. So I mean, I was going to say, in my opinion, but we don't do something in these roads and bridges that are just terrible. And why would any industry want to move to Iowa when we don't want to improve these conditions? I, what, well, and what is eight or ten cents when this gas price is where it is? What's eight or ten cents? Well, like I said, well, eight, eight or ten cents per gallon of fuel. Okay, you're looking up to. Talking about fuel tax, you're looking at it. I drive a truck, and you're talking 100 to 200 gallons. You take eight cents per gallon. That's a lot of money. That's coming out of our pockets to put where it doesn't even fix the roads. Well, what are what are our get? What are our vehicle registrations and our license fees and everything <laughs> else? What are, what do they go for? They should go for the same thing, but they don't. Well, won't you, like you said, we're going to pay for it one way or the other. <coughs> so it'll be in those registration, the license fees, property tax, and everything else. But if we put it on the fuel tax, it's these 30% of non Iowans that would be helping pay for it, right? Well, that's that, true. That's a, big, that's a big percentage of people helping us to pay for our. Pay the for other it. thing to remember with the fuel tax is it's constitutionally protected, so it can't be scooped like. A lot of other things get scooped, so it can't be scooped. There's a there's a formula in place. <coughs> Nobody's talking about changing that formula, so that helps provide equity amongst all. Um, the other thing, just to be devil's advocate on your comment, is that yes, I understand you're you know you it'd be an extra cost to your fuel cost, but I'd also like to say, you know, I just spent seven hundred dollars redoing my wife's front end of her vehicle because she drives from St. Ansgar to Austin, Minnesota on 218 every day. Uh -huh. And I had to completely redo the front end of that vehicle because it was shell. Oh, and so, you know, there are some other costs that, that were, you know, were occurring as well. You know, and there's minor things. You know, you can take a look at some of our school districts that can't go across certain bridges with their school buses, and they actually have some added costs on bus routes just because they have to go certain ways. Mm -hmm. Part of our whole Mennonite problem with the Mennonites and the steel wheels in one location is because they can't cross a bridge with those tractors and they have to go another route. Um, you know, we've got bridges that are embargoed in the state of Iowa that emergency vehicles, we've got people that have bridges on both sides of their homes that technically if they had an emergency, these vehicles, these emergency vehicles could not get to them, technically, because the bridges are embargoed and the vehicles would be too heavy. I mean, so they're... You know, I, 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 you know, I don't think anybody in this room is going to argue the fact that we have some serious infrastructure. Yeah. I just, if you can give me an alternative solution for we're going to get all these dollars to fix the roads, I am more than happy to listen to those alternative solutions. But it's, it's not. And I think even the <clears throat> the Department of Transportation came across with all these cost savings. I, I just don't know that that's going to be helpful. I mean, there's some efficiencies, but they're not really real. I think that's they're fair not. to say. Well, and I mean, so they got lucky, you know, they saved some major money this winter because they didn't have to okay. have all the costs because they didn't have any snow. But, you know, I agree. I, you know, talking to some DOT folks, I mean, <coughs> you know, it's hard to make that it is. thing real. So. I know it's water over the dam, but the legislature has a lot yeah, yeah, and I know that gets said, but I, I truly think that. <coughs> There's some. Well, we, you know, Culver took it off the table. First time he had a strong support. It was coming out of committee, and the, he took it off the table. And I think the governor made a bad choice in saying what he did, taking it off the table. And I think Speaker Paulson probably didn't help it at that point either. Well, and I, you know, I'll tell you guys, I mean, I sent a message, an email to Speaker Paulson last night. And, you know, he's my leadership. He's my speaker. He's, you know, I'm Republican, he's Republican. But I sent him a message last night, and I just said I'm very disappointed. You know, I'm disappointed in the fact that you've killed us. You know, and, and, and I'm disappointed in the fact that maybe 
the whole campaign election thing is at the forefront of postponing this. And, you know, it just come up to rural Iowa and check things out. But and I don't think it's just rural Iowa. We talked about that last month. You know, drive the interstate. They're not even good. I mean, there, there's some serious needs out yeah. there. But, but rural Iowa now has the formula where we are comfortable with it. We don't want to lose that. And I think we're going to keep putting it off. Did you have a question yes. back here? I see you raise your hand. Anywhere well, I was just, I'm just wondering, what do you foresee on the reorganization of mental health? Uh, Which part? Um, well, whatever you, they always talk about reorganizing, I guess. Yes, when, we're, we're when they get in trouble, they reorganize. But <clears throat> it seemed to me, and I was on the mental health board for 20 years, and in Mason City District, we did quite well. Our problem was that the psychiatrists are all down in Iowa City. Right, yeah. and one of the things we've opened up and doing more of the PA skin, I think you guys passed it in the house. Sometimes when, after it gets out of the center, we don't know, or you probably feel the same way when it's out of the house, we have no idea unless we look it up all the time. But all, giving the opportunity for <coughs> ARNPs and, and PAs to do more. Explain what those letters are. ARNP is a nurse, registered nurse practitioner, and a PA is a physician's assistant who is under the supervision of a, a doctor. We've expanded some of the opportunities for um, their ability to work in the communities, partly because of rural Iowa, because that's, you know, and the shortage. Health. Uh -huh. Mental health centers now using telehealth for psychiatry. Yeah. Right, and, and keeping that. But we also um, have worked with the mental health groups. Um, they're organized all across the state, and they've been very active in helping with this redesign. We have... Um, worked off of the region system that we've had set up in, in our area, which involves um, Bob Lincoln, and we've got uh, Floyd Mitchell, Butler, Sarah Gordo, you can help me out here. Blackhawk. Blackhawk. And Blackhawk, Black actually, for Blackhawk, we're trying to work with them because they've got a, you know, instead of sending somebody to the hospital right away, they've got a facility there, um, the part of the juvenile detention home that's empty and closed down. We're opening that up for an opportunity for people to go there instead of to the hospital, which would cost lots of bucks, you know, maybe three days, maybe five days. And um, so we're trying to put some legislation in to get it going because we don't know what kind of license they're going to be under. We're trying to open that to make it a pilot project. We also um, um, have agreed on a lot of, of, you know, when somebody is in a crisis situation, they end up having to go to the hospital and if the hospital won't admit them they end up having to be driven all the way to a facility um, maybe your sheriff's transport them all the way to Sioux City because not every hospital will take them and we're trying to get a 24-hour hold we're 48 hour hold so you can calm people down that they don't have to be transported your sheriff's costs or be less here <laughs> and actually for the good of the individual because sometimes you know when daylight comes around things are a little different uh, that whole system has been, uh, all of the people that have participated have uh, come from all across the state and given us their ideas and we've worked really closely with all the consumers and uh, professionals in, in a lot of that. The basic issue that's left is the property tax. Um, that's the big, uh, right now the counties put in uh, your levy and it's capped and that got taken out last year and the whole system was taken out and um, most people agree that the counties need to still have some skin in the game with this um, and there is a proposal out there to buy all of that back on a state level and if you buy all of that back on a state level well, that's fine but then you've got that in the same situation that you've got with education and you're going to pit all of those groups against each other and then you also that um, problem that there's going to be growth in mental health. Whether you like it or not, it's, there's going to be more cost and there's going to be more people involved in that system. So we don't factor any of that in and we just can't afford it on a state level to pay the whole price. Right now the proposal is to take over the Medicaid funding and um, keep the $125 million all across the state uh, as property tax yet. But not increasing that on property tax. I can get more into the weeds if you'd like, but I don't think anybody else wants to. <laughs>
So you'd say that for mental health reform, the major uh, the major issue is how to fund <coughs> how to fund the system because uh, you know people are talking about bringing people that uh, have brain injury into the system. We don't fund brain injury brain injury now. There are a few counties that do. When you do that, that's going to cost. I mean, when you get brain injured, that is not something that you're going to spend a small pittance on. So.